What's going on, everyone? It's Adam and Craig with Grandstand Golf. This is our PGA DFS pick show for the Palmetto Championship at Congaree. Craig, I nailed it that time. That kangaroo trick worked out for me that time. Yeah, uh, fourth time's a charm. Uh, now, the, the real challenge is going to be, can you go the whole week without screwing it up again? Because that's... Definitely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, let's take a look, peek back at the Memorial. Uh, it's okay. For, actually, no, it wasn't, my, it wasn't my best week, that's for sure. But you had a couple of nice ones. Uh, Colin Morikawa, second... Uh, so four of six make cuts. Keegan and Grio had their kind of hot streaks end. But Colin Morikawa, Alexander Shaw, with a couple of good finishes for our picks. But yeah, Morikawa in the playoff. Uh, close for your pick. Yeah, I mean, Colin Morikawa, when he putts well, he is at the top of leaderboard. So I think it's definitely something to keep an eye on as we move into uh, the U.S. Open here. But uh, yeah, I mean, not a, not a great... Uh, I felt like I had decent players in the pool, but uh, you know, didn't didn't put any together into big lineups. Um, and and yeah. personally, I think you had Cantley in your pool, but I, I missed out on him. So that definitely limited the upside. Yeah, I had some Cantley, but no uh, six of sixes with him. It was just kind of an overall poor week. But man, Morikawa is battling Hovland for like my new one of my new favorite mm-hmm. players. Both of them are just studs, and I, I love watching them week in, week out. Yeah, I, I have to say, man, if Colin Morikawa can figure out his putter, um, you know, like week to week, some consistency, he is he's a threat to win every single time. Floodgates are going to... Yeah. Yeah, floodgates are going to open in terms of those yeah, wins. Sure. Uh, follow us on Twitter, at Grand Sand Golf. Subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and hit that thumbs up button. Thumbs up button. Craig, we're at a brand new course, brand new event. We had a you know preview podcast that we released, talked about a little bit, some of our strategy, but I think we'll talk a little bit more strategy here as we go into each of our picks. Yeah, I mean, when you see my picks, I think you get a pretty good idea what my strategy is. Uh, so let's jump into it. Yeah, let's do it. My first one, Terrell Haddon, 10,200 on DraftKings. He's fourth, bumped up on Fandle. He's third, 11,800. So, I mean, a little bit, I'm just looking at guys that are playing well, have played well. You know, if they played well around the gr- globe, I think that's kind of a, a bonus. Um, stroke scan total, stroke scan approach, those kind of things. Can it play firm and fast? Uh, that's what they're saying. But I don't really, no one really knows what's going to happen with this course until we step on it on Thursday. So I just want guys that, you know, have uh, have won, are winners, and kind of play anywhere. That's kind of what I'm thinking for this week. So, Haddon's definitely in that. Uh, some of his wins, you know, Abu Dhabi, UAE, 7,600-yard course. So, like mm-hmm. there. Uh, BMW PGA Championship over in the UK, won on that one. 2020 Arnold Palmer in the US. So, that's three different continents he's won on over the past kind of year and a bit, two years here. So, he just can win anywhere. And I think he can win with any kind of style. And I like that for kind of my stud that I'm plugging into lineups. Um, looking at his strokes in total over the past three months, six months, 12 months, extra bullet point there, Craig. That's my first mistake of the, it's not a real grandstand golf show until I have some kind of grammatical error. So that's on me. Um, but he's second three months, second six months and second 12 months. Uh, I, he's just good no matter how you look at it. Um, and then he did get married in North Carolina this past week. It was on his Instagram. So Maybe there's that, you know, there's the newborn kind of mojo. Maybe there's like a newlywed honeymoon mojo. Maybe he's just a little bit stress free, doesn't have, you know, his fiery moments. I don't know. I like having this week. Yeah, or or maybe he's distracted because of all the new marital responsibilities. You n- you never know. Um, but no, I, I like Hatton as well. Uh, I'm not going to be making, a, a, you know, the full however many lineups I, I'm going to be limiting how much time I spend building lineups this week. Cause, cause one eye is on next week, but I think for sure Hatton will be in some of them. Yeah. That's a good point for me as well. I'm not going to do the 20 max. I'm looking at at least one GPP, maybe a three max for me uh, this week, but it's definitely a kind of more of an off week. Yeah. Load management, I guess I would say. Load management. Uh, exactly. Speaking of load management, uh, Dustin Johnson, 11400 on DraftKings, 12200 on FanDuel, most expensive on both. Uh, a guy that, you know, I think the strokes gain total sort of tells the story, although, uh, you know, maybe doesn't necessarily capture how how dramatic the the good has been and how, how you know, I, I think maybe the, the decline of, of DJ has been much exaggerated, but uh, we'll oh, get yeah. into that a little bit. But anyways, you look at, uh, you know, two years and 12 months he's the first in stroke scene total over those periods of time the 12 months number just jumps out at you it's it's 2.11 which when you consider for the last 
six months and three months, it's been hovering around 1.24, 1.1. Uh, it, it gives you a good idea of what it was six months ago. Um, well, and I think even 12 months ago, that's when we had a couple of 80s. You yeah, know? So yeah, yeah. Th- that, that middle that middle chunk was pretty was darn good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I mean, to me, this is just, I, I think DJ is one of these people, uh, we saw it when he, you know, he had that 80 or, or 70 or whatever it was at 3M. And then, you know, he took one week at, at the, uh, the FedEx St. Jude, where he was uh, out, just outside the top 10, I think. And then he just went on the absolute tear after that, where he, he essentially was in the top five for uh, a long time. Um, but but really what it comes down to for me, we're talking about a guy with 24 PGA Tour wins. Uh, we're talking about the number one player in the world. Uh, he's gained strokes off the tee in 10 straight rounds. That's probably something people aren't thinking of when they, when they think about uh, where DJ's game is at right now. He's averaging over a full stroke stroke gained in that time uh, he has messed around he's put a new shaft in the bag uh, which he he does he's not one that tinkers a lot with his equipment but uh, this this new shaft came into the bag at the PGA championship and so uh, obviously uh, he is doing some tinkering but to me the the off the tee game is in a good place it's the approach game that is the huge question mark so you look at the the reign of terror he had on the PGA Tour where he was just you know he was week in week out he was in contention Uh, the approach game was on point he had 12 straight tournaments from August 2020 to February 2021, uh, where he had at least 0.78 strokes gained approach. Um, per round. Per round, yeah. So, you know, some of them were, were much, much higher than that. So that was, yeah, that was the well, yeah, lowest sure. one he had in 12 straight tournaments. Six tournaments since then, the highest he has had is plus 0.38. Uh, he's had a few negatives. Um, it's just, it, it really, I think that really tells the story of of how he has kind of ebbed and flowed over the past year. But to me, all of that said, I think DJ is capable of the quick turnaround. I think this is the weakest field DJ has played in in quite some time. Uh, so he can show up with his B or C game and be relevant. Yeah. Uh, I just think that if he... You know, he, he hasn't played since the PGA Championship. If he has spent that time grinding and trying to figure some things out, I, I think it could have been one of these ones where we're like, Man, remember when we thought DJ was washed? Or like, you know, <laughs> when we thought he wasn't on a heater and he comes out and he wins this thing by, by uh, you know, with a very comfy five-stroke lead or something. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I feel the exact same way about DJ. I think he was in our picks show or my, one of my picks for the PGA Championship. Um, just kind of like by, by the dip. Um, but the other thing I want to say is this narrative that he's going to coast into the U.S. Open. I am not buying that at all. He wants to sharpen his tools, sharpen his trade going into the U.S. Open. So I think he's going to actually be quite motivated for this to make sure that, you know, his approach, his irons, his wedges, all that is kind of locked in where it needs to be for Tory Pines. Um it, yeah, if I'm playing three lineups, I got one with DJ without a doubt. Yeah, and you know what? We we saw him uh, contend right before the Masters win last year. Obviously, that's when his form was in different shape. But he is not the type of person. He he is the type of person that it, he likes to play the week before majors, and he mm-hmm. does well oftentimes in those weeks. Yeah, for sure. Okay, my second pick here. I'm going Keith Mitchell, 8800 on DraftKings. He's 12th. He's 12th on FanDuel as well, 10,100. So. Most recently, what have we seen from him? He made a missed cut at the Charles Schwab. Uh, before, before that, prior to that, six made cuts, um, four of those being top 26s. I do want to say that's an asterisk. One of those was a Zurich a team event with Brown Snedeker, but still four top 26s, six made cuts. He was playing very, very well up until that missed cut at Charles Schwab. So kind of look at digging a little bit deeper into his game and how he's been playing. So strokes gain off the tee, he's gained in eight straight events and he does average 305 off the tee. That is the entire PGA Tour season. So he can definitely push it out there. This is a long course. It's always an advantage to get it out there if you're hitting mm-hmm. fairways. Uh, he's gaining strokes in putting in seven of his last nine tournaments and he's gaining on approach in four of his last five. So kind of, it's maybe not all come together for, you know, <sighs> He has had some high finishes, but maybe not contending. If those kind of come together, that's trending in the right direction. We're getting him at a more expensive price than we've seen probably in a long, long, long time. But he is, his game is trending in the right direction. Uh, he does have that win at the 2019 Honda Classic. That is kind of a 
Fazio design, Jack Nicholas redesign, but I'm still kind of counting it as maybe a course comp, not the not a birdie fest, but you know, still a, a tough kind of course you need to get around. Um, and then most recently, Craig, I, I've been doing. I, Monday was a great day for golf. All those U, USGA qualifies for the U.S. Open. At first, I was thinking, you know, do I want to skip all these guys that play 36 holes on Monday, or do I want to, you know, only go to the guys that haven't qualified or go for the guys that are qualified? Ultimately, <laughs> there's too many of them in the field to go to mm-hmm. cut them out completely. So I just I'm just trying to maybe catch on the Instagram if they seem like or catch a quote in an interview here or there. How exhausted are they? But you know, he, he didn't play right before. He had those 36 holes on the US Open qualifier. He did miss by one stroke. So he he's playing well. He didn't get in. I, I think he'll be fine for uh this tournament here. I'm just kind of seeing that as kind of a neutral. His game's still kind of sharp outlook yeah and i mean uh, uh, these u.s open qualifiers are cutthroat uh, so missing by a mm-hmm. stroke he played a lot of really good golf to get to that point um it, it's you know it, i think it's for a lot of these guys it's the some of the first monday qualifying type stuff they've had in some time so it, <laughs> it, it definitely is yeah. interesting um i so I, I likely won't have any Keith Mitchell, and that is really just because I think that I'm going to go very heavy stars and scrubs this week, as you'll see with my next pick here. So that that would be the one thing. Other than that, I I, I do like the pick. Uh, I do, you know, I like his form. I, I think it's it's tough to know course fit, but uh, yeah, just just the way he's playing, he's kind of fitting for most courses right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, my next one here, so I'm going all the way down to the third most expensive guy, <laughs> Matt Fitzpatrick, 10400 on DraftKings, 11700 on FanDuel. He's fourth over there. Uh, just falls a little bit behind Terrell Hatton over there. Um, strokes gain total. So this one, you know, a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit the opposite of DJ, but but kind of quite... I mean, the, the the peaks and the valleys aren't as extreme. We see, you know, three months yeah, to sure. two years. His lowest is the two years at 1.39. His highest is the last six months at 1.73. Uh, but he is first over the last, you know, more re- near term and then falls to third in the long term. Uh, but good numbers, I think, across the board in terms of strokes gain total. Uh, the things I like about his game right now, gaining strokes off the tee in 24 straight rounds. He, he, you don't, it's not really the first thing I think about with Matt Fitzpatrick as his driver, but mm-hmm. his driver has just been very reliable and not just reliable, but you know, like good, like he's gaining almost, he's averaging almost a stroke gain off the tee in that time. So, yeah. you know, is that sustainable? I don't know, but I, I, it's in good shape right now. So, so to me, that's a, mm-hmm. a definite plus. But then the other thing, he's the number one putter in this tournament. Um, you you yeah. can make a pretty strong argument that he's the number one putter in the world. Uh, but right. you look at over the past two years, he's gaining 0. 0.80 strokes putting over the past two years. Second place, there's as much distance between him and second place, which is 0. 0.67 as there is between second and I think eighth place. So it gives you an idea wow. of there's kind of like, there's a whole bunch of guys and then he's just a little bit of an outlier above them. Give me Brendan Todd. Uh, JT Poston is the, is the number two ah, guy. JT is, is, I don't know. Is Todd okay, in okay. the field this week? Oh, right. That's that, so that's field. this field. Yeah. I, I don't know yeah. if he would be number one with everyone account for but anyways regardless in this field he he's definitely number one doesn't, and, and by a good margin is is what i'm saying um <laughs> yeah. but then yes yeah, seven seven top 20s in the last 11 starts and four top tens in that time i do think you know he hasn't had the best form in the last uh, two or three starts uh but before that he was really on a tear of good golf so i, I just think that uh, you know this is kind of where the class of the tournament for me is at the top of the field um i'm gonna be plugging in two of the top four players and then doing what I can do to put together lineups outside of that. Yeah, I like it. I, I did pull it up. So top 150 players in the world last two years, number one golfer. Who, it's not Matt Fitzpatrick. Who do you think it is? Um, I feel like I'm going to know it. Usti. Webb Simpson. Oh, Webb. What's Webb at? Yeah, a little bit. Sur- that, I would have gone there What's as the well. number? That's interesting. 0.85. Oh, so gotcha. he's 0.5 up on Matty Fitzpatrick. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I like Fitzpatrick. I don't know. Uh, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. It is tough. With uh, these top guys, but, you kind of have to pick. You kind of have to just choose one and, or, or two and go with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, my third and final pick here. I'm going Ben Martin. 7,600 on DraftKings. 30th on FanDuel. 9,125th. So this kind of our sleeper is 7,500 and below. He's just kind of at the bottom little bit here of our picks. 
Uh, but he is playing with good form, basically. He's coming off two straight made cuts, T26 at the AT&T Byron Nelson. Another spelling mistake. Love it. Uh, T11 at the Wells Fargo. Uh, so coming in with good good finishes here. Uh, an interesting kind of stat. You know, I had to. I, I had these all changed around. Then in the picture I pull of Ben Martin, his shoulder was all wonky. So it's out of the order that I wanted to talk about them. But I'm going to talk about them in this order anyways. Uh, he is positive in every stroke category for the year. I don't think you're going to find many players in the field, especially 7,600 and below, that are positive in every stroke mm-hmm. category. It just shows that there's not a glaring weakness where he's going to bleed a bunch of strokes in a certain round or in a group of holes. It just kind of it, it's a little bit comforting, kind of like a Xander Shoffley at a major. You know, he doesn't have a glaring weakness that he has to overcome. So what you're saying is Ben Martin is basically Xander Shoffley. He is the Palmetto Xander Shoffley. <laughs> exactly. Whew, bold. Yeah, I know. Uh, he missed the U.S. Open qualifier in a playoff. It was close. So I think uh, Keith Mitchell was in Atlanta. So he, he wasn't up, you know, far away, lots of travel. He was in Atlanta. Ben Martin, I think, was in Hilton Head. I think he lost in the playoff to your boy, Akshay Patia. So, Can't say I'm disappointed miss- in that one. <laughs> <laughs> missed playoff, but it's still playing well. So it's just kind of a neutral kind of, yeah, he might be tired, but he's playing. It's still showing he's playing well mm-hmm. over those 36 holes. Um, strokes in uh, total per data golf. So <laughs> actually the last 30 days, I think it's just two tournaments, but sixth in the entire field. So he is playing very, very well. What 1.33 last three months, 15th still compared to his pricing. Very, very good. Plus 0.64. You know, when we go to the entire year, that's probably where his, you know, price is in between the three months and the 12 month number. Uh, but he is 41st in 12 months, still not far away from that. 30th price ranking on DraftKings, uh, but he is minus 0.12. For this field, that's still pretty good. Uh, this seems like a, a kind of a safer play, playing well with, I think, still that upside. Uh, like He is a winner. Uh, so I like Ben Martin at 7,600. Yeah, you know, six six place strokes in total in the field. Some people are saying he's like the Xander Shoffley of, of Palmetto. It's just what I'm hearing. Ooh. A lot of people are saying it. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I honestly, I, I have not done a deep dive on Ben Martin, but I do like guys that are, are balanced. Uh, so I, I do think there's upside there. Yeah, I, I, I like the pick. Sure. I, uh, my last one here, similar range. Uh, Pat Perez, 7,700. He's 27th on DraftKings, 9,000 on FanDuel, 27th over there as well. To me, it is a, you know, just kind of like the journeyman vet, uh, Beware the person who has experience playing. You know, when you open up their on their um, PGA Tour page to see like their course history on different courses, and the whole list is like hundred, you know, a hundred courses long. Beware those type of guys when they have to travel to a random course to play a PGA Tour yeah. event because they've spent a lot of time adjusting to a new course, and and he is someone who has had success all over the world. Um, yeah. So you know essentially fairly consistent play whether you look at three months or two years i think there you're just squeezing a little bit of value he's kind of 19th to 23rd in rankings over that time right. and, and the stroke gain total really doesn't wander that much from the kind of gaining about 0. 0.3.2 range uh the, the things i like 61 pg tour career top 10s it would not be surprising if he had a top 10 uh but mm-hmm. it, you know, it's just kind of in a in a weaker field. Who do you go to? Someone who kind of has success doing well in weaker fields. And uh, last eight starts, a single missed cut. Nothing great to write home about in the time. Top forty five in his last four straight starts. So it's been good, but not great. Um, the one thing that I do like is is a positive approach in all four uh, because he is. He is a fairly balanced player, probably not as balanced as, as a Ben Martin because uh, Perez, you know, he, he more he gains with his putter and with his around the green play. And typically right. he is maybe a slight gainer with his approach play, sometimes a, a loser, uh, you know, season to season. Uh, but then he mm-hmm. loses a little bit off the tee. He just doesn't have the distance. So I think if you look at his last two years, he, he's about down 0.2 off the tee and then a slight gainer elsewhere. But really it's the short game that, right. that is his strength. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I, I think that someone that I think has, has kind of decent top 10 upside. I don't see Pat Perez really winning the tournament, but if he can, if he can be a a 7,700, I I don't think I'm going to spend a ton in this range. Like in the, we, we, for our pick show, we do, 
we do 76 and above. Um, and so if mm -hmm. I'm going stars, if I'm plugging two of those very high price, high price guys in, I'm going to be much more in our sleeper range below 7,500 and below. But I, I do think if I, if I get to this range, Pat Perez at 7,700 is definitely one that I will look at. So stay tuned for our sleeper show because Craig has a lot of <laughs> gems there. Yeah, apparently. I actually built... I built one lineup so far and I didn't go below 7,500 and I kind of like it. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? I think there's going to be a lot of stars and scrubs this week. So I, I would say that's a good contrarian approach to take. Uh, it is interesting though. We had Vincent Whaley on our preview show as one of the top five trending players. Um, he's 7,700 as well. He has one career top 10 compared to Pat Perez, 61 <laughs> yeah. career top 10. It's like when you kind of take a step back and look at it that way, you're like, well, who's more like like the guy to get his second one ever or his, get his 60 second one ever? It's interesting. I Pat Perez didn't I didn't have a lot of thought uh, just kind of looking over the salaries, but going to do a double take. He's now. just kind of one of those names that you're like, oh, yeah, it's a weak field. You expect Pat Perez to be in there. But like oftentimes that's when he is value. Well, I was like, is it is it uh, Kuala Lumpur? Is it Corrales? Corrales <laughs> yeah. Where's the past pal in yeah, here? Where's yeah. it come on? Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching our upcoming schedule. We're going to change things a little bit as we go here over the next little while. I think we're going to kind of, as Craig said, kind of compress, expand, kind of depending on the week. U.S. Open is a lot, so we're going to have a lot of content coming out for U.S. Open. But we have a preview in First Look. That is out now. We did a preview podcast, which is a new format. That is out now as well on the podcast apps or on YouTube. And then, as we always do, Sleeper Show, coming soon, 7,500 and below, our favorite place. Yep, I'm just trying really hard not to sneeze right now. So um, good luck this week. Okay. We'll see you next time. Yeah, take care. Bye.